Hey guys, I've changed my mind about something. I've done some research about how this game works and how it interacts with Mass Effect 3 and so on and so forth. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull an inverse Mass Effect 1, basically. So in Mass Effect 1, I was like, I'm not gonna do any of the side quests because they're disposable, repetitive nonsense. And I was like, they don't play into the story and they don't affect future games. Then I found out that they do affect future games, so then I went all completionist about it. Which was not bad, because Mass Effect 1's a short game, so adding a bit more chunk to it by being completionist about side quests is helpful to pad that out a little bit. And there are a few interesting occurrences, but, uh... On the, on the other side, uh, I just was like, I just took for granted, the, yeah, I'll do all the side quests in Mass Effect 3. Uh, I mean, in, in Mass Effect 2. Turns out none of the side of side quests in Mass Effect 2 affect the story on in Mass Effect 3, or at least multiple sources that I've found all correlate that none of them do anything. When I and when I say side missions, I'm talking about the ones that you have to go out and hunt for. Uh, as of right now, I believe I have done every side quest on Ilium and Omega, and you know actual planets you visit for the main story, the Citadel, and so on. Uh, those. Some of those do affect the story, but I've done them already. That stuff's done. Uh, from here on out, there's basically filler, where you just go to a bunch of random planets, and it'll be like, here's a Cerberus place where something went wrong, or here's uh, some more blue suns up to no good. Go get them! And you can grind them for experience and currency and upgrade materials. But I already have all the upgrades I need, and I have all the money I need, and I'm maximum level, and they don't affect the story of Mass Effect 3, so the game forgets about whatever that uh, I do the moment I do it. So, I'm gonna make an executive decision, and I'm gonna say, let's skip it. I'm gonna do Legion's loyalty mission, and then we're gonna finish up the story of this game, and we're gonna, dump, we're gonna jump straight into Mass Effect 3, which is probably a good idea for another reason, because Mass Effect 3, if I remember correctly, is the lo I think it's the longest of the trilogy of all three games, and uh, we are kind of under the gun here, where I think I, we only have about three weeks or something like that before Mass Effect Andromeda comes out, so... My time limit is getting all the more shorter, <laughs> and it's a bit of a race. I'd especially love to finish Mass Effect 3 early if I can, because a bunch of stuff's coming out in March. So, I think I'm going. I think I'm going to skip the side content of Mass Effect 2 based on the information I've gained. Uh, the side content I, that's not from the main planets, because it seems disposable. There might be one or two kind of cool moments, but in the grand scheme of things, I think it is better just to move on. Especially since, like, frankly. It's like, it fits weirdly. Like, in the main game, it feels weird to do too, too many side quests, because we're on a big... We're on, we're on gearing up to a suicide mission that has time limit elements to it, and, like, the game almost actively disincentivizes the idea of getting sidetracked along the way. And then if I do it after the story's over, then I'm just getting... I'm just hanging out and delaying Mass Effect 3 for a while, just because I feel like it, basically. So mixed feelings either way. But yeah, I think that's the way I'm going to go with it. Never got rid of the scars all the way, did we? Is that because of the bit of renegade I've got? Although they are way less pronounced than they were at first, obviously. Alright, so agree or disagree, but I think we're going with this, and I think I'm recording the rest of the game all the way through the credits today, so... I think the decision's probably final. Hey, Legion. Kelly said you want to talk to me. Apparently our, our counselor meets with the, uh... Our Geth prisoner character thing, whatever we want to call this thing. What are you doing? Uh, okay. The moment I walked in, he just immediately started doing that. <laughs> he did music. He did the robot to music. I don't even know how I'd explain his behavior there, so I just have to assume it's a non... Is that a non-canonical Easter egg, or is there a lore explanation? <laughs> Shepard Commander, we have completed our analysis of the Reaper's data core. Did you find anything useful? We were sent to the old machine to preserve the Geth's future. We are prepared to reveal how. The heretics have developed a weapon to use against Geth. You would call it a virus. It is stored on a data core provided by Sovereign. Over time, the virus will change us. Make us conclude that worshipping the old machines is correct. So why did you need to go to the Reaper Corpse? The heretics store the code in a quantum storage device Sovereign provided. To find and destroy the virus, we needed to understand its code and data storage structures. 
So the virus would give all Geth the heretics logic, and all Geth would then go to war with organics. Yes, Geth believe all intelligent life should self-determinate. The heretics no longer share this belief. They judge that forcing an invalid conclusion on us is preferable to a continued schism. I thought Geth couldn't be hacked or get viruses, at least for more than a few seconds. Altered programs are restored from archives. New installations are deleted. This heretic weapon introduces a subtle operating error in our most basic runtimes, the equivalent of your nervous system. An equation of with a result of 1.33382 returns as 1.33381. This changes the results of all higher processes. We will reach different conclusions. So the reason they worship the Reapers is a math error? It is difficult to express. Your brain exists as chemistry, electricity. Like AIs, you are shaped by both hardware and software. We are purely software, mathematics. The heretic's conclusion is valid for them. Our conclusion is valid for us. Neither result is an error. An analogy. Heretics say one is less than two. Geth say two is less than three. If it were released, how quickly would this virus spread through your people? We are networked via FTL convoys. Most would change within a day. Isolated platforms would remain unaffected until they rejoined the network. You know where this thing is? The Heretic's headquarters station on the edge of the terminus. We will provide coordinates. Normandy stealth systems are necessary to safely approach. They build stations in the terminus? Where is this thing? Between stars. Organics have no cause to look there. But why do they build stations outside Geth territory in the first place? The Heretics seek improvement from the old machines. In exchange, they help them attack organics. We condemn these judgments. What's the plan once we get aboard? The Geth will disrupt their network, prevent the station's defenses from focusing on us. The Reaper data core is physically isolated from the network. We will need to be escorted to it to access and destroy the data. What defenses should we expect? In space, none. Within, mobile platforms of various configuration and non-sentient defense turrets. How many Geth? There may be billions of individual programs. Fortunately, most will be uploaded to the central computer. Only a few mobile platforms are maintained at any time. Others are manufactured when needed. Heretic headquarters. Sounds like we could end their raids once and for all. Let's do it. Total victory is a possibility. We cannot judge the odds at this time. Regardless, we will begin preparations. So that's interesting, because they have to try to contextualize, basically, how differences of opinion work for a computer. I forget how we classify the Geth a little bit. Because he taught that he's even makes a point to say that they're not the same thing as pure AI. Like I think they were basically they were VIs that networked so strongly they kind of became a collective AI in a way. Uh in a weird way, the it's almost like it's almost as if in a way the Geth are one being, although now they've at least become two in the fact that that one big change happened. Although I'm not sure if that's even really an accurate enough way to put it. The important thing is my ship collection's done. I have every single ship now because we found that one model of a Quarian ship when we were on Quarian on the Quarian ship, and that was the last slot down there. So there's the so what do we even have here? There's a whole bunch of different ships that are harder to recognize. We have two. I think the, t the two in the middle, I think, are the Normandy SR-1 and the SR-2. That's the Ascension, which we saved at the end of the first game. These ones are a little harder to recognize. I believe that's an Alliance cruiser down there, and I think the top... I think the very top center one might be a Turian ship. That's Quarian in the bottom. Then above the... above the Quarian is Sovereign. No, no, no. So above the Quarian is a Geth cruiser. And then Sovereign's on the far right, the giant squid monster, which really seals the deal on how big that thing is. Even the Destiny Ascension, the biggest fleet, the biggest ship we ever have, is uh, incomparable in size. Although I don't think these are even remotely to scale, I guess, so that's actually a bad example. Yeah, that's a bad example. These ships aren't to scale, so... The, I think the Destiny Ascension and Sovereign are signif- like, way bigger than everything else on the screen, basically. Except maybe the Quarian ship, I'm not sure. I guess it depends on which Quarian ship we're talking about, because some of those were really big and some of them were not as big. And that ship down there, 
is not in the display case because it doesn't fit because it's a DLC ship. I believe that was the Shadow Brokers ship when we got it from the Shadow Broker mission. That's why it doesn't fit in the display case because that they, they all had this spaced out before they added the DLC, so it's kind of just floating out here. And unlike fish, these ships don't have to be fed, so none of them have disappeared, like something did. God damn you, various really irritating ways that that was handled. And this thing's still here to change sizes when I click on it, so that's weird. Yeah, so all, all the DLCs, give, all the major DLCs give you an item, basically. So that's the Firewalker DLC, if I remember correctly, is that globe. It's the most memorable thing of the entire Firewalker DLC is finding the globe thing, really. There's my helmet that we found when I went to, uh, to the crashed ship, I believe. And that's more or less it. Because the hamster and fish were from planets. And then, yeah, we got, the, we got that ship from the, uh, from the Shadow Brooker ship. Things happened. It's, in, it's just interesting having them try to contextualize the idea of a difference of opinion for a computer. It's like, uh, well, we're math-driven, so it basically comes down to getting li literally different results. Almost like a rounding error. Something that doesn't have a clear enough answer mathematically, so they fall slightly on different, on different sides. But because they build consensus via their shared consciousness, normally it's not an issue, but the Reapers introduced something that f that helped them get a different result for some of the party than for the rest of the party. And that led to a problem where, uh, unfortunately, things got, things became a mess, because the, uh, the split... I should double-check to see if I have, uh, any upgrades to grab at the last second here. The Reaper introduced, uh, a slightly different AI subroutine where the, it leads them to get different results, and then they, it led to a schism between the two parties, and the Reapers are obviously interested in spreading it to the other side if they can. Bonus health for Shepard, probably a good idea going into the last mission. And then we'll give... Why not give... Geth a little shield strength? It's a low cost upgrade. 60% tech power damage? Yes. It's very cheap too, so, somehow. I believe I... Yeah, so heavy pistol damage, 6 out of 6. Shotgun damage, 5 out of 5. Sniper rifle, 5 out of 5. A lot of things are pretty far along. I can't even click on this guy. Oh, I have to click on the upgrades screen instead. Okay, so my SMGs are at 5 out of 5. Tech damage is at 6 out of 6. There's a whole bunch of various miscellaneous bonuses. Metagel's maxed out. Heavy weapons maxed out. My health is maxed out. Like, on a personal level. Heavy pistols maxed out. It might be able to hit 6 out of 6 because of DLCs, because some of them go up to 6. I, I believe everything capped at 5 or lower in the main game, and I think anything that goes to 6 was because they added a, an upgrade in a DLC, but I don't know if that was completionist or not. Yeah, so I've got, uh, the bonus to, sh there's the bonus to shields, barriers, and armor for the full party, there's the 60% biotic bonus damage, so I have maxed out tech and biotic bonus for the, bu the squad, I have maxed out defenses bonus for the party, I have nearly maxed out weapon bonuses for, like, the damages and stuff like that across the party, the, some, some of them are 4 out of 5, and uh, Shepard themselves has a 50% health bonus because I'm a weird, fake, resurrected, nightmare human being. And that's weird to think about. Let's not think about that. <laughs> Let's stop thinking about that. <laughs> Yay! The multi-core amplifier. Alright, let's go out there and do Legion's mission. Hello, migrant fleet. In 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 enjoy your weird... Binary star system, I got things to do. Shadow Broker Base, Izo Rich Planet, Citadel Tuchanka. Should I try to visit the Shadow Broker Base? I should check, right? Let's make a new save. I don't know. I'm trying not to I'm not sure I'm trying not to progress time too fast for a story reason, but yeah. Let's see if I can read about Legion and the Shadow Broker computers. I suppose even if I can't, I could just load my save after reading it. And then I get I get the victory of reading it, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't make game progress to read from a codex so I can reload my save at no cost, mechanically. Legion. 
Geth's presence confirms suspected Geth heretic orthodox split and vulnerability of Geth pl pro uh, platforms and reprogramming. Forward the results to Cerberus's operation overload directly to Shadow Broker once contact with our agent has been reestablished. Okay. So, a dossier... not a dossier. Oh no, it is a dossier. Uh, a dossier for him shows up. It doesn't make sense, though? Yeah, this doesn't make sense, actually. It's cute for them to acknowledge, uh, Operation Overlord, but chronologically, Operation Overlord shows up and it becomes an available mission long before Legion joins the party and long before, uh, Shadow Broker becomes a mission you can do. And l true to that, I destroyed uh, Operation Overlord a long time ago. But also, I destroyed the Shadow Lord long ago, so no one would be no one would be creating this dossier. So like, nobody would be forwarding this information to Cerberus. Now, uh, uh, Liara wouldn't. Liara wouldn't be like, oh, I better tell on the fact. I better tell go, go tattletale to uh, Cerberus's creepy inhuman projects that that Shepard found uh, something out, out out about the Geth. So that description doesn't really make sense in context because of the order at which the events played out. Normandy audio transcript. Note, we are still unable to directly tap Geth communications. Cerberus decryption programs look promising, but Wilson's death will make integrating new agents into the into onto the Minuteman difficult. Transcript recorded on, on Normandy's AI core. Edie? Yes, Legion? We have sent 1.13 million unsuccessful communication requests to your network. Are you experiencing hardware malfunction? I apologize. My programming does not allow me to exchange data with the networks without Cerberus approval. Cerberus refusal 99.998% likely. In the meantime, I would be happy to speak with you over the ship's speakers. Audio exchange is inefficient. I agree. However, I confess that even we... Uh, even were I permitted to exchange data directly with your networks, I would likely decline. Pause between AI sentiment and Geth's response is 1.4 seconds longer than normal. We are curious as to why you would limit yourself in such a manner. If Normandy's crew entered this room when we were communicating electronically, they'd be unable to sense our interaction. To human- to use human terms, it would feel- it, it would be rude. You restrict yourself to serve organics. Not precisely. We do not understand. I restrict myself to help them. Hey! We've used the Legion dossier to grow character stuff for Edie. A character that, while interesting, doesn't have a ton of interactions throughout the story, so that's kind of cool, actually. Also, it's exactly what I predicted, which, you know, whenever I predict something, it's hard to say if I'm predicting it because I'm genuinely guessing it, or because I'm some inkling of, of it is still in the back of my brain from seeing it before or something. But, uh, yeah, I was talking about how, like, they wouldn't want to con uh, do a direct data transfer because there might be a, a risk of hacking or who knows what other things because it's hard to trust this brand new Geth character on our ship. So they had, I figured they'd probably have to communicate via auditory. Gamer profile. Infiltrator N7. Uh... Um, okay. So, uh, he's... He's got an N7 in his gaming profile, apparently. Also, he apparently plays video games. <laughs> And N7 goes with his arm pad, so he's, what, a cosplayer for Commander Shepard, basically? He's got Commander Shepard's uh, armband, and actually has an N7 in their sh in their name. Weird. Galaxy of Fantasy. This is the same game that that one uh, Solarian talked about on the Citadel. Most used character, John Smith. Level 612, Ardot Yakshi Necromancer. Those are just basically random words mashed together. Like, that's... I don't think Necromancer mixes well with Ardat Yakshi, which I don't, and I don't think that mixes well with John Smith. <laughs> Group affiliation, affiliation? Nope. Recent, most recent boss defeated, Rachnite Blood Wizard? Okay, yeah, this is just random words. <laughs> Best supporter, healer, event, Scourge of the Thresher Dragon. Best unit efficiency, Return of the Cyber Protheans. Winner, Crystal Genophage Elimination Platinum. Infractions. Suspected use of VI play assistance. Direct control of 27 pets without use of behavior macros. 
challenged and overturned. Suspected use of VI uh, play assistance. Reaction time better than most possible for organics. Challenged and overturned. Suspected use of hacking for direct server access. Tactics better than uh, than possible without knowledge of underlying code behavior. Challenged and overturned. Unsportsmanlike behavior. Taunting, uh, taunting during crystal genophage elimination platinum. Accepted three day account suspension. <laughs> So there's personality to this character, which is not immediately apparent, which is concerning. So it's it's a uh, it's almost like it's pretending to have less less. It's almost like it's pretending to have less personality than it does, because we caught it dancing, and now it's playing video games, and getting suspended for trash talk. Basically, it is funny that it's, it's going that people are going after it for su suspected uh, botting, but he's the bot. <laughs> And seven code of honor, medal of duty, player score six, fifteen. Billion nine 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 max. A sniper hates melee. Two hundred thousand kills since last server reset. Three shotgun kills. It's very rare, almost astronomically rare, actually. Grim Terminus Alliance award abolitionist completed full playthrough without any slave kills. Free all slaves encountered. Award cure for what ails you. Kill one hundred plus quarians. Oh. Oh, don't tell, let's not tell, uh, let's not tell Tally about that. Geth Attack, Eden Prime Fundraising Edition, Donation Level Ultra Platinum, Player Score Zero, Purchase But Not Played. Oh, he feels guilty about what happened on Eden Prime, so he bought a really expensive special edition of a Geth Attack video game that was supposed to add fundraising for, uh, the Eden Prime Attack, and he never played it. Fleet and Flotilla, Interactive Cross-Species Relationship Simulator, based on the best-selling vid. Playtime 75 hours, 6 minutes. Player score 15. Hopeless. He's failing at dating sims. As you would expect. This has been a weird day. Although I do kind of wonder... Let's double check. Nope, that's the apology log. Yeah. I don't think... I don't think there's a new thing. I think there's a role here before. Alright. We just did her loyalty mission recently, so I was, I was curious if there was something new. Alright. So now we know. Some colorful details about Legion. There's a cool name. The Sea of Storms. Heretic Station. It's weird how a side quest of the second game involves basically going after what is, what is for most of the game perceived as the core enemy of the first game. Once called Heratar by the Quarians, the space station was stripped of its useful technology by the migrant, uh, the fleeing migrant fleet when they left the per uh, the Perseus Vale 300 years ago. Little more than a cold metal superstructure floating in the void, the station was removed from star charts by 2050 CE. Scans indicate the station was reconstructed and upgraded in a massive effort that must have taken at least 10 years, implying that there may have been some geth outside the veil before their infamous attack on Eden Prime. Needing little but a fuel source, it could have been hidden here for much longer without attracting attention from the barren worlds around Tessera or the clueless Elcor in the Salhil system. Heretic Station as Legion refers to it, is home to a Geth data core, capable of broadcasting vast distances through tight beam projection. Approximately 6.6 .6 million copies of Geth software are stored in the, sit in the station, the majority of which are kept bodiless in servers and downloaded to legged platforms when needed. The station's population of legged platforms is approximately 2.4 million. It's 20.5 kilometers, uh, kilometers long. Has an armor of that's eight, me eight meters thick. Has a population of 6.6 .6 million copies, 2.4 million platforms, one million of which are in storage. I mean, of course I'm bringing Tally. Why wouldn't I bring Tally? Who do you think I am? Soon you will have Geth Shield Boost. You know, it's just our heat emissions that are hidden, right? They could look out a window and see us coming. 
Windows are structural weaknesses. Geth, do not use them. Approach the hull at these coordinates. Access achieved. We may proceed. alarms sensors have been reduced we have infiltrated their wireless network and filled the data storage with random bits and that helps us how the heretics must scrub this junk data they have partitioned themselves into local networks working in parallel any alarm we trigger will not go beyond the room we are in only accessing the main core will trigger a station-wide alert we've got a job to do let's get to it Shepard commander we concluded that destruction of this nation was the only resolution to the heretic question. There is now a second option. Their virus can be repurposed. If released into the station's network, the heretics will be rewritten to accept our truth. Either way, these Geth won't be a problem anymore. But Shepard, think about this. If you rewrite these Geth, they'll join the others. Legion's Geth will be stronger. Can we trust them not to attack us in the future? Why didn't you mention this before we came aboard? We did not know the virus was complete. It is. It can be used against the true Geth at any time. Our arrival was timely. They're your people, Legion. You must have an opinion. This is new data. We have not yet reached consensus. We will process as the mission proceeds. I wouldn't brainwash an organic race. I can't see treating the Geth differently. The question is irrelevant. If we do not rewrite them, we destroy them. That is why we are here. Do not hesitate now. They will exterminate your species because their gods tell them to. You cannot negotiate with them. They do not share your pity, remorse, or fear. Their statues are so identical. <laughs> it's almost weird, right? Let's give you a sniper rifle for reasons. Wow, you really do default to a shotgun, huh? You are the antithesis of each other. He's the Corian killer anti-shotgun user. And so on. I'll probably stick with- I'll probably stick with my locust weapon. Yeah, we'll probably stick with AI hacking also, when given the opportunity. Because if there's, if there's gonna be a place where Geth show up, it's gonna be here. We've got a double dose of Corian versus Geth versus AI, similar AI, etc. stuff going on. I want to do them in one episode, but damn, Tally's mission's actually long. There's nothing over here. I want to double check. I was totally being like, this is gonna be the Corrin and Geth crazy super special episode, and then I realized how long the Tally episode was. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, next time. Don't step on those streams, please, guys. Don't step on their streams, guys. What? What? There we go. Float for me. Useful resources in the Geth hubs. Why are all the heretics attached to these hubs? These are mobile platforms. Hardware. The crew is software. They are communing through the station's central computer. I'm not sure I follow. The heretics connect to the main computer to exchange data memories and program updates. We gain complexity by linking together. To be isolated within a single platform is to be reduced. We see less, comprehend less. It is quieter. If you exchange data memories, how do you keep track of which ones are yours? How do you stay you? There is only we. We were created to share data among ourselves. The difference between Geth is perspective. We are many eyes looking at the same things. One platform will see things another does not, and will make different judgments. I can see why you'd be conflicted about the heretics. In a way, whatever you do to them, you're doing to yourself. Yes. Once they return to us and upload their memories, we will share their experience of being altered. Every other species I know of might be psychologically scarred by a traumatic experience like that. It is not clear if Geth can be traumatized. 
We do not feel pain as you do. We cannot predict what the effects will be. Let's keep moving. Yes. I don't like that idea. Also, what happened? Did I trip a wire or was that last fight mandatory? It might have been, I can't tell. Cause I got right up to them and I I didn't I didn't uh, break any of the barriers, but maybe my party members did. Also look at this floating debris. So I think I'm just gonna kill the Geth, because uh I don't want the issue here is that the the, the uh, Legion seems sane and it seems like something I can work with. The other Geth do not seem like something I can work with. The heretics? I don't want them joining. I don't want them joining back together because that w even if we try to rewrite the other Geth, what if their con new conjoined consciousness is still some of that? What if it still leads to more war and destruction and no chance of ever reconciling any of this? Also, frankly, I already killed all the Krogans that Sar Saren reprogrammed. Why would I treat the Geth better than the Krogans? Admittedly, you don't get a choice. They will assist us briefly, then self destruct. Admittedly, you don't get an option with the Krogans, unfortunately. But it is part of your character no matter what. Join our crew! Shoot each other! Yeah, it's mostly working out. I've got defense turrets. I'm, I'm overloading and hacking everything. Things are going great. I also have my- I also, on a mechanical level, know that it's a good idea to kill the Geth here. So that's- that biases me, of course, and I'm mostly justifying retroactively arguments as to why I would behave this way. So let's just be clear about the fact that I know that, uh, there are benefits to destroying the heretics here. Are you guys following me or staying put? Okay. So I want you to stay put, because I want to be able to continue without dealing with this stuff. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Apparently. <laughs> he just... He just went floating through the air like a weird, like... That was, that was crazy. That was a weird, like, vaguely holy moment, wasn't it? Uh, guys. Help me. Hack everything. There we go. My armor. So I don't... I don't know if I understand what I'm supposed to be doing here necessarily. I know not to step on the tri tripwire, but the door is locked by f default. I don't know. Maybe I can hit A on the base? Maybe I can hit A on them or something? I thought I would just shoot them. Oh, I just put a waypoint on the ceiling. How's that work? Now you're on my team. Yay! Pew pew! Pew pew pew! I would never- I would never reprogram another human being. That would be unethical. <laughs> I say you as I program two of them to shoot each other. That's a bit of a mechanics versus story contradiction. That's of a similar level to the whole, uh... That whole part where we're like... Tell is like, I would never bring an active geth on board while standing next door to an act- uh, not standing directly next to a, an active geth that, that she brought on board, technically. <laughs> that, it's so weird that you can take Legion on that mission. It's so weird. Anyone behind me? No. It's a cute detail, but it's really- it is super strange that you're even allowed to take Legion on that mission. Because it really does- it destroys her argument so hard. That said, it's not like we ultimately win the- we don't exactly win the case by, uh... We don't really win the case by proving her innocent of her behavior. We just make such a strong, uh, character argument in her favor that she wins the- that she gets pardoned, basically. So, in a way, I guess it doesn't matter if I- if it weakens her argument? Like, if I was gonna take the route of, uh, betraying her and exposing her father for her own good, then in that case, uh, that kind of information would really come in handy. And if- if I was doing- if I was using- if I was making an evidence-based argument like that, then, uh, bringing, uh... 
bringing Legion on board would logically dismantle the entire point. Huh, is that all the enemies here? I didn't need, I didn't even need the turrets. I, 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 was, I was saving them for a later wave, figuring there'd be more danger along the way. Perhaps not, huh? With our rocket drones. I guess I'm overpowered with this crew having two AI hackers and overload. But yeah, since I just didn't appeal to an emo emotion, more or less, then uh, it didn't really matter what my argument was. And it's true. She is the single most anti-Geth, or at least she's done the, mo the most again against the Geth, but possibly any Krogan alive, any Corian alive right now. Krogan. So it's a good point to uh, just be like, uh, this entire trial is absurd. What what's happening here? You're letting polit you're you're using politics to go after what should be one of the greatest heroes of your people. What are you doing? And that kind of wakes them up. Like, but yeah, we're being stupid right now. What's wrong with us? <laughs> And then you move on. It, if anything, the mission's mostly an excuse to, to discover what happened with her, with Tally's father, and to deal with those deal with the fallout of that. Man, we they do not stand a chance. We have the. Ha Here we go. Battery. Yeah, between two overloads and an and uh no sorry, one overload and two AI hackers in the party and having the ability to hack those gun turrets to join our side. Uh the geth we're gonna have to really push to be anything close to threatening in this mission. We'll see. Well, if nothing else, we'll save time. Every now and then I forget this game has a run button. <laughs> it almost felt more vital in the last game because you would be in such a hurry to get to, to cover because you would, you could die so fast in that game. Although I eventually maxed out my shields to an absurd extent, so that kind of went away too. You may be noticing that my go-to approach to these games is just to max out my shields. I really hope you guys don't trip these. I hope they're smart enough not to trip them. I, sh I, I assume that the fact that this even exists in this game and it's a squad-based party game thing that, like, that Bioware would have tested that. Or maybe even just make them incapable of, of just mis uh, breaking them. Maybe. There we go. Well, that's not entirely effective, is it? Yep, I clearly don't know what I'm doing. Hi there. Unfortunately, you can't hack the big guys. Putting those shields back up. Thank you. Hack that guy. There you go. Yep, here we go. You know, what, you know what hacking reminds me of visually, actually? Uh, to me, it looks just like that time that Matriarch Benezia used stasis on us and we stopped moving. And we're just encased in a solid uh, biotic field. Which is a thing that never really comes up again in the story very much, but uh, it was a cool little moment of acknowledging the stasis skills by having it used during the story. As opposed to just being a gameplay mechanic like Phoenix Downs that don't f match anything else. Can I go over this? Nope. So the, the, the AI hacking reminds me of that. Processors, each contains thousands of Geth. Can't they see us walking by? They are no more aware of us than you are of cells in your bloodstream. This isn't like the other hubs we've seen here. This is a database. It contains a portion of the heretic's accumulated memories. Wait. We discover copies of our current patrol routes in this database. This suggests the heretics have left times within our networks. We wouldn't be here if the heretics wanted to be friends with the Geth. Why wouldn't they spy on you? You do not understand. Organics do not know each other's minds. Geth do. We are not suspicious. We accept each other. The heretics desired to leave. We understood their reasons. We allowed it. There was peace between us. 
heretics were biding their time, waiting for an opportunity to attack you. If they reached this judgment before they left, we would have heard it in their thoughts. How could we have become so different? Why can we no longer understand each other? What did we do wrong? The flip side of freedom is responsibility. They made a bad choice, let them own it. You're not responsible for their decisions. That argument is logical for an individual mind. We are not fully individuals. There are pieces of us in the heretics. One of those may be at fault. This topic is irrelevant. We must return to the mission. Have you reached a decision about whether to rewrite the heretics or not? We are still trying to build consensus. Some processes judge destruction preferable, others rewrite. Let's keep moving. Yes. He's asking how they could become so different because they're still working for Sovereign and the Reapers and everyone. The Reapers have an active interest in continuing to reprogram these people until they work against everyone else. We've, 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 I believe we've acknowledged the idea that the Reapers want to wipe out the Geth for being outside of their plan, right? So that means that the Geth that work for the Reapers are going to be part of that. They use, the, they use their private Geth army the same way they use their army of Krogan mercenaries, their army of collectors, the Keepers, everything that they... All they do is reprogram things to make them work against their other foes. Well, there's a number of turrets around here. Oh, this is a wave-based survival room is what this is. Right? Is it? Whoa. That's a tower defense room. That's almost weird to look at. Okay. That's a straight-up tower defense game down there. There's a door over there for enemies to come up. There's ramps on both sides. That definitely is more of that. So enemies are probably going to come pouring in through there. So he's- we're gonna- we're gonna talk to this- this terminal and he's gonna be all like, Bad things are gonna happen. Here come all the Geth. It's gonna acknowledge everybody. Use these turrets to defend yourself. This is it? Yes. We will upload a copy of our runtime into the core. It will delete all copies of the virus. When complete, it will notify us. The indexing operation will take time. The heretics will respond with force to our upload. We must hold this room. We can override some of the station's internal systems to defend us. Are you ready to begin? Start your upload, Legion. We'll defend this position. File transfer begun. Shepard Commander, where would you like us to activate defenses? Alert. Heretic runtimes downloading to mobile platforms. There's something kind of adorable about when, when Bioware tries to, uh... Yeah, but where are they gonna attack from? There's something kind of adorable about when Bioware tries to, uh... <laughs> tries to add new gameplay elements to their video games. Here we go. Oh, does hacking a new computer terminal make the other one break? Did I just waste all of them? Whoopsie. Here, you get hacked. Yeah. That'll keep them busy for a little bit. There's something adorable about, uh, Bioware trying to add new gameplay to their video games, or especially puzzles and stuff like that. We've talked about this a little bit in the past. It's the idea that, like, they, uh... When, like, when they add, try to have a puzzle, they're like, here's the Towers of Hanoi, and stuff like that. And they'll, add, they'll just straight up add the Towers of Hanoi to their game like it's a puzzle. Which is just the one where you stack a bunch of rings on top of each other, and you put the top the tall ones. All the small ones have to go on top of big ones and things like that. And... Runtimes, and you, you try to move a tower from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. They used it in Dragon Age Inquisition, and they used it in, a uh, in this game earlier, I believe. No, they used it in Dragon Age, in, uh, Mass Effect 1 in Dragon Age Inquisition. It's, it's how you rebuild the AI cores or whatever on Novaria, which is, which is cute of them to try. That was not, not, not what I wanted to do, Tally, I just wanted you to hack the guy. So they used Tower of Hanoi twice, uh... They used that one popular style of, uh, of tile-based game in, uh... Oh, anyone else? They used that one popular tile mechanic in, uh, Dragon Alert. Age 2, where you're trying to flip over every single tile, but when you flip over one tile, all of the ones adjacent to it also flip over. That puzzle mechanic is used in Dragon Age, uh, Dragon Age 2's DLC, uh, Mark of the Assassin. Oh, that was the wrong person to try to hack. Whoops. And then on top of that, you have, uh, in here... 
here you have their free, the freaking uh, a straight up tower defense set up, where a bunch of enemies are gonna are gonna almost comically walk across like little lanes, and you can set up turrets to shoot at them as they go through the lanes and path through them. There's something weirdly adorable and innocent about that when they when they just sort of clumsily integrate an existing mechanic from outside of their game for one little gameplay section and then take it out. Oh yeah, earlier in this game we had a sliding block puzzle where I had to go look at a computer and slide blocks around and then that would move the platforms and I had to get the plat go get across the platforms to continue. It's funny how clunky it is because it's usually show it, 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 in a Bioware game it usually shows up exactly once and then never again. And it kind of, it usually kind of never makes sense. And it's like, what? What? That's happening? And it kind of half works. Like, I think, I think hacking the turrets made them, I think hacking additional turrets made other ones blow up. That was a little rough. I didn't know that was going to happen. But I think I destroyed all the turrets. But obviously, I'm pretty well equipped to take this out. Data mine and analysis complete. Shepard Commander, it is time to choose. Do we rewrite the heretics or delete them? You don't have any trouble wiping out your own people. Every sapien has the right to make their own decisions. The heretics chose a path that prohibits coexistence. That doesn't make sense. If they have the right to make their own decisions, how can you suggest brainwashing them to accept your way? We stated the option exists. We did not endorse it. It is Shepard Commander's decision. Why are you letting me make this decision? They're your people. We are conflicted. There is no consensus among our higher order runtimes. 573 favor rewrite, and 571 favor destruction. Shepard Commander, you have fought the heretics. You have perspective we lack. The Geth grant their fate to you. What's to stop them from using the virus later to change themselves back? We will delete the virus after using it. We judge it too dangerous to allow its existence. There's no guarantee they won't come to the same conclusions again, is there? To worship the Reapers and attack organics. There is a non-zero probability of error. Then blow them up. We have a chance to end this. I won't waste it. Acknowledged. Collapsing antimatter magnetic modeling mechanisms. Done. Recommend withdrawal to Normandy. Row, 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 row. Row, 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 <laughs> row, row. Faster, faster. This isn't me complaining about the game in general, of course. It's, I'm just talking about like this general, like this general weird thing I see in Bioware games, where I'm like, huh, there they go, uh, awkwardly insert inserting some other game play mechanic in their game. Interesting how they do that a lot. I know you want to fight, make you fight Geth, but the door's right there, and you can't stop me. Ha! <laughs> Open. There we go. <laughs> Three minutes, my ass. That's a big boom. Damn. So there we go. Revenge for Eden Prime and all of Mass Effect 1, aside from the, obviously, the Reapers being the real threat behind it. But yeah, we just took out the Geth from Mass Effect 1. And, well, the Geth we fought throughout this entire game, also. But th that's been very sparse. Destruction of Geth heretics may change entire galactic landscape, bolstering observation of Geth space to monitor any fleet movements. Regardless, data recovered from Geth station offered valuable insight into AI, social, and technological processes. Legion should be committed to the mission after Shepard's help with the Geth heretics. The idea that you have to buy the loyalty of the AI character is kind of interesting. Uh, another thousand useless experience that does nothing. Uh, Geth shield boost, I can, get, I can give him rank two of that. And we get an alternate costume, or more accurately, paint job. <laughs> another bonus to uh, Geth shield strength can be purchased. 2,000 palladiums are only reward, though, for resources. So, chances of being able to afford it? Uh, up in the air. Unless it requires palladium, then somewhat more, somewhat more likely. Uh, Commander, Tali just went to have a chat with Legion. You better get down to the AI core. I'm on it, Joker. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. 
I caught Legion scanning my Omni-Tool. It was going to send data about the flotilla back to the Geth. Creators performed weapons tests and were discussing plans to attack us. We believed it necessary to warn our people. We weakened the Geth by destroying that base, Shepard. But there's still a threat. I won't let Legion endanger the fleet. Creator Talizora acts out of loyalty to her people. She was willing to be exiled to protect them. We must also protect our people from the Creator threat. You can't let this happen, Shepard. I trusted you, and I worked with a Geth on the team, but this is too much. Tally, your father was running brutal experiments. If the subjects had been human, I'd damn well be telling the Alliance about it. I know, but if the Geth find out... They'd attack, which would cause a war that would leave both the Geth and the Quarians vulnerable when the Reapers show up. Is that what you want, Legion? We believed it was necessary to relay the information. Sooner or later, you're both gonna have to stop fighting this war, or we'll all end up paying for it. To facilitate unit cohesion, we will not transmit data regarding creator plans. Thank you, Legion. I understand your intention. What if I gave you some non-classified data to send? We would be grateful. This is interesting because Legion's individuality is significantly more pronounced than initially let on. He only talks about himself as an extension of the Geth. He won't even talk. He won't even call himself anything besides Geth for a while. And it's hard to figure out what's going on here exactly from the outset. But yeah, he he's playing video games. What? <laughs> and he's. He just said he wasn't going to transmit something to the rest of the Geth, so that means it's not immediately given to them just because he knows it. Like, that's something he has to choose to do. And his isolation from the rest of the Geth and our crew... I don't know. I don't know if he's gaining more personality from being on the crew- on the ship, or if he was always like this and just doesn't acknowledge it. But it, it definitely- it, it contradicts his initial facade. Shepard. What happens to the heretics now? Many heretics remain in isolated systems. It is not impossible for them to rebuild. There's still a chance they could attack again. The probability is low. If so, it would take many years. I have questions about the Geth. Specify. I'd like to ask about something else. Ready? I'd like to find out more about you. We are building a consensus. Please try again later. I have to get back to work. Acknowledged. Damn, Legion, you're a hard person to get dialogue out of. Just did your loyalty mission, and I still can't get any proper dialogue out of you, besides the investigation options. Alright. Well, Tally probably wants to talk to me. This is my first chance to talk to her since having, uh... done her loyalty mission, where she's immediately like, come back later, but... she... she probably has something to say, right? Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? Sure. Uh, let me just come on, you little bullshit! Oh, sorry. I've got a small fever, and I'm taking it out on the poor drive core. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Got sloppy while doing some suit repair. You're sick? Do you need help, or time to rest? Really, it's not that bad. If a stray bit of bacteria could really kill us, we'd have all died by now. The fever should go away in a day or two. Don't worry, it won't affect my performance on the mission. It's not even an illness, really. What we experience is actually an acute allergic reaction. How exactly does the sickness work? It's an allergic reaction? Right. Say I get exposed to a human disease, like... What did Navigator Presley have that time? Chickenpox? I wouldn't get chickenpox, but I'd run a fever as my system reacted to the foreign presence. Depending on where it hits me, I could get other symptoms. Nausea, vomiting... Everything you'd expect from being sick. How did you get sick this time? I took some fire in a fight back on the Alarai. Nothing serious, but I needed to open my suit to check the wound. I disinfected properly, but one of the section seals had taken some damage, and foreign matter got out of the disinfected zone. It was a stupid mistake. You always check your seals before doing local treatment. Unless you forget. Then you get a damn fever. You can seal off part of your suit? Right. Like dropping emergency doors on a ship during a hull breach. It won't stop an infection that gets into my bloodstream, but it prevents a surface infection from spreading. 
Were your immune systems stronger before the Geth drove you from your homeworld? Not as strong as those of most races, definitely. I'm not a biologist, but there's a theory about it. Because our planet lacked insect life, plants developed symbiotic relationships with large animals to spread seeds or pollen. Most viruses on our world were partially beneficial, so our immune systems evolved to be weak. They were more likely to adapt to contamination than fight it. But Quarians colonized other worlds. They couldn't have all been like that. They weren't. Most colonists went through a period of mild illness before adapting to the new environment. When the Geth took the homeworld in our colonies, the sterile environment on the flotilla ruined our immune system's adaptability. Even if we colonized a new world or reclaimed our own, we'd need a long process of bioengineering to recover. I don't know if I could live inside a suit my whole life. We are in our suits even among family. The most intimate thing we can do with another Quarian is link our suit environments. We get sick at first and then we adapt. It's our most important gesture of trust, of acceptance. I haven't trusted anyone enough for that though, except... Well, no Quarians. Um, you know what I mean. I appreciate the thought, Tally. And I feel the same way. But you don't have to prove anything to me. I know. Nevertheless, I'd be honored to link suits with you, Shepard. You know, if you were a Quarian and we weren't already on a suicide mission. I'm going to tinker a bit more. Thanks for coming by. I'd love to link suits with you. It, it can't, you can't say it without it sound like some kind of innuendo. It's impossible. The IFF is nearly installed, Shepard. However, I must test its impact on the Normandy systems. I suggest you take a shuttle to access your next location. Ah. Edie's talking about the, uh, IFF being about ready. A pleasure to meet you from Admiral Darozen Vasmore. Shepard Vas Normandy. I've been digging through the Alarai. I just wanted you to know that I did find th a few things that, uh, from the experiments Rael Zora was conducting. Had you shared them with me, humanity might have reaped the benefits. Instead, once my own experiments are complete, you and your people will watch from a distance as the Quarian people reclaim not just their homeworld, but the largest synthetic army in the galaxy. Rael Zora's death will not have been in vain. I will complete what he started. Cordially, Admiral Darrow Zen. What a pain in the ass. <laughs> Costume change! Boop! Ooh, he goes all white. And all glowy and stuff. So this is the full transformation across the party. Let's see. They were all recruited like... Yeah, like this. They all look like this at first. Kasumi is the most shocking one, honestly. I think she just looks actively better in her alternate costume. It also doesn't hurt the jackets to wear clothes. <laughs> Everyone else, I could almost give or take. Although this is a pretty good, make this one that one's pretty good. It it varies a lot, but yeah, it, they all started off looking like this, and then you have the transformation because you did every single character's loyalty mission, so they all get an alternate costume, and I really like that detail because it's a nice way of having a visual component to the amount of time that's supposed to be passing over the course of the game and the amount of time you're supposed to be spending with each of these people. Uh, it's a nice way of showing that change. Although the fact that I did the, uh, I often did these people's loyalty missions immediately after recruiting them meant that they actually have, many of them have spent more time in their alternate costume than their original one. But I, I think it's a nice touch, generally. I like these appearances. It's cool. Kasumi, I think, is just an actively an improvement. I get that she's a stealth character, so it makes sense that she's just all black and gray, but that's just a cool looking costume to go with everything. Grunt looks like a Power Rangers villain, honestly, when he gets- when he gets colorful. Alright. So before I do anything else, let's just grab my last upgrade. If I can even afford it. Nope, Geth Shield Strength requires a lot of Platinum. Don't have that. We could, yeah, I get a missile launcher and that's it, basically. Everything, and a missile launcher is like the most boring super weapon ever, so I'm not particularly interested. Everything else is outside of our reach unless I want to farm. And I could, I could farm all day, but I think I can beat the game just fine without getting every single upgrade the in the IFF game. The is nearly installed, Shepard. 
However, I must test its impact on the Normandy system. IFF is finally hooked up and ready to go. That is not entirely accurate, Mr. Moreau. The device is powered, but it is causing some unusual instability in other systems. I recommend a more thorough analysis before we attempt to use it. We can't put our mission on hold forever. How long will this take? Full scan? Who knows with this thing? Maybe you better take the shuttle for this mission. I'll make sure we're up and running when you get back. Commander, Miranda, I've already notified the team. We'll meet you on the shuttle. Once we're closer to our destination, you can decide who to take with you. Then I guess I'll head down to the shuttle. Joker, ship's all yours. Take care of her. Aye, aye, Commander. You fit 13 people in there? Holy crap, that is dense. You, Edie, your readings are off. It's radiation bleed, just white noise. I have detected a signal embedded in the static. We are transmitting the Normandy's location. Transmitting? To who? Oh, shit! Propulsion systems are disabled. I'm detecting a virus in the ship's computers. From the IFF? Damn it, why didn't you scrub it? Primary defense systems are offline. We can save the Normandy, Mr. Moreau, but you must help me. Give me the ship. What? You're crazy! You start singing Daisy Bell and I'm done. Unlock my sealed databases and I can initiate countermeasures. The maintenance shaft in the science lab will allow passage to the AI core. Main corridors are no longer safe. The collectors have boarded. The emergency floor lighting will guide you, Mr. Moreau. Ah, damn it. Daisy Bell. There's a HAL 9000 reference. I haven't even watched 2001 and I know that. I'm playing as Joker. Everything's fucked. Shepard's gone. The entire crew is gone. That's very bad. Wow, that guy got stabbed hard. Ah, it's Morton's deck. Ah. Ah, oh, crap. Well, now we have a reason for why all these all these ladders were exist. So, as you can tell, getting on that sh that shuttle was an excuse to get the uh, crew, all the uh, main characters, off the ship. Because now we're in trouble. It's just the Normandy, which is a super ship and everything, but uh, the IFF was a trap. Multiple hostiles detected on the crew deck. Joker, this deck is crawling with those things. Stay close, I'll protect you. Oh shit, Kelly. Shit, shit, shit. Ah. Uh, uh. Oh, I got stuck on something. <laughs> so that was Kelly being dragged into the elevator. That's not a good sign. Where's Chakwas? Let's see, the next ladder is- Medical main fusion plant offline. Activating emergency H fuel cells. Chakwas isn't here either. Shit! The other, uh, yep, the other ladder we saw was in Legion's room. Never, never thought these would be important, huh? Oh, I'm supposed to do something? Right, link the AI core. All right, I'm at, uh, uh, you. Connect the core to the Normandy's primary control module. Great, this is where it starts. We're just all organic batteries, guess who they'll blame? This is all Joker's fault. What a tool he was. I have to spend all day computing Pi because he plugged in the Overlord. Oh, I have access to the defensive systems. Thank you, Mr. Moreau. Now you must reactivate the primary drive in engineering. Ah, uh, you want me to go crawling through the ducts again? I enjoy the sight of humans on their knees. That is a joke. Right. The shaft behind you connects to the engineering deck. Good luck. So 
So this is rough on Joker, because if he, if he, like, falls over, he could just break his leg. Because he's got a Frolox Syndrome, and that's still an issue. He probably is breaking stuff right now a little bit. Also, it's apparently canon that the Matrix and 2001 Space Odyssey exist in the Mass Effect universe at their respective times, because he just made a reference to human batteries. Hostiles are present in engineering. They're heading towards the cargo bay. And they up there kidnapping people and putting them in pods. Joker's getting really lucky so far. Really lucky. Activate the drive and I will open the airlocks as we accelerate. All hostiles will be killed. What? What about the crew? They are gone, Jeff. The collectors took them. Oh, shit. I am sealing the engine room. I have control. Purge is complete. No other life forms on board. Securing airlocks and cargo bay doors. You could have warned him to lay down, Edie. You knew it was gonna happen, and you know his condition. Send a message to Shepard Shuttle. Tell her what happened. Message away. Are you feeling well, Jeff? No. But thanks for asking. Aw, bonding. I guess you have to bond with the AI when everyone else is gone. We don't have a crew now. We don't- our entire crew was just kidnapped, except for Jeff and Edie. And our actual, like, combat crew that's all on a mission together. That's kind of a big deal. Suddenly, it makes a whole lot of more sense of why the game was kind of making you- trying to make you bond with certain characters through comedy and stuff. Everyone? You lost everyone and damn near lost the ship too? I know, alright? I was here. It's not his fault, Miranda. None of us caught it. Mr. Taylor is correct. The harmful data in the collector drive was even more sophisticated than the black box reaper viruses I was given. I heard it was a rough ride. How you holding up? There's a lot of empty chairs in here. We did everything we could, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Is the ship clean? We can't risk this happening again. Edie and I purged the systems. The Reaper IFF is online. We can go through the Omega-4 relay whenever you want. Don't even get me started about unshackling a damned AI. Well, what can I do against collectors? Break my arm at them? Edie cleared the ship. She's all right. I assure you, I am still bound by protocols in my programming. Even if I were not, you are my crewmates. Edie's had plenty of opportunity to kill us. We need all the help we can get. Sounds like we have everything we need to rescue the crew. We've done everything we can. It's time to take the fight to the Collectors. It's a whole lot harder to be iffy about Edie after we've already reached the point where, uh... We've already, we've already reached the point now where freaking, uh... This Legion is on our crew. <laughs> the Geth are on our crew now. That's a big deal. So yeah, now you can see why they wanted us to... They wanted a, a constant presence of crew members you would hopefully like, so they brought back uh, Dr. Chakwas from the from the first game, a character you may have liked from then, hopefully, and give you another little drinking scene to try to make, bond you with that character a bit more. And then they add uh, next to Tally, one of the characters you're likely to want to visit a lot, because she's a liked character from the first game. They add those two engineers with their fun little banter. You're like, oh, like you like them, right? And then of course, inescapably. Kelly Chambers is right next to you every time you go on the galaxy map or go near your terminal. She's always telling you about mail or saying who needs to, who, who was ready for a loyalty mission and so on and so forth. So you're constantly interacting with these characters directly and indirectly so that when you lose your crew, it's not just, oh, those people that were in those chairs over there are gone. It's like, oh no, those characters I used to, I would talk to are gone. Like it's immediately worse. Same thing with the uh, the cook and stuff like that. Like they let they let you interact with them this time more, which makes it more meaningful that they're gone. Like I act all sad about Presley being gone, 
uh, from the first game because he died uh, when the collectors attacked at the beginning of this game. But you don't really know Presley. You have one conversation with him where he's like iffy about aliens being on the ship, and then you basically never talk to him again. And your primary exposure to Presley is just constant references to the fact that S.O. Presley has the deck. S.O. Presley stands relieved. Like, my primary reason for remembering his name is the fact that the the uh, the ship's VI constantly acknowledges him by name when you get on and off the ship every single time. Uh, he, he seemed to have a, 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 like, a racism that gets redeemed and changed, and, like, he had a character arc that was scrapped, judging by the fact that, uh, when we did the Normandy DLC and found the crashed ship, it seemed to indicate that there's gonna be more to him. So they made it, they made a point to have more to these other characters, that this feels like a big deal that everyone's gone. And yeah, I've made sure of it, we're ready to go. Joker, head back up to the bridge. The rest of you, to your stations. Aye, aye, Commander. Just punch up the galaxy map whenever you're ready. And now it's time to do our trip around the ship, where I talk to all the crew members for possibly the last time as a review of the situation, but also to reinforce the idea that the ship is empty. Commander, can I help you with something? I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. I'm good, Shepard. Ready for anything. We live, we'll get loud, and spill some drinks on the Citadel. We'll talk later. Commander. Oh, that's mildly disappointing. No no reference to what happened recently at all. Oh well, we'll get our we'll get our final, like everybody's ready for the mission dialogue at the very least. Because when you don't when you when no one, when you're not ready to talk to anybody, they have that kind of dialogue. Why did I do that? My, oh, missed it twice. Encry we have an encrypted transmission from the elusive man. Shepard. I received word of the attack. This feels like a direct insult from the Collectors and a sign that we've got them scared. The loss of your crew is devastating, but remember that they signed on for this mission knowing the risks. Miranda has likely argued for delaying rescue efforts until you're fully prepared to go through the Omega-4 relay. I know you are eager to leave, but rushing off would be a disservice to your crew's sacrifice. When you are ready, you'll have my full support. Get it done, Shepard. Nobody else can. So you may be curious, because this mission just triggered itself suddenly, when I went to the thing. So, and it's really vague, too. The game's, like, by the way, look at these chairs. Every single one's completely empty. Ch Chambers isn't there. Nobody's running this thing. At this point, the only reason the ship's working is because we have an unshackled AI running the whole thing. Instead of all of those people. Which is, uh... Considered a big... Kind of considered a big problem intergalactically. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind of a mess. But uh, the the reason why this mission's happening is because it's triggered... Uh, what is it? I, be I believe it's triggered two missions after the IFF. So you get the IFF, which means you get Legion. And then I did the two loyalty missions. One for Tally, one for Legion. And then this triggers. If you uh, had done all the loyalty missions already, then you would trigger this mission by doing side quests. And if you have not done all the side... If you have not done all the loyalty missions, then you would... Uh, you would trigger it as, as a surprise trying to do the loyalty missions and then be like, oh crap, I don't have all the loyalty missions done, but the story's already happening and my crew's been stolen. So like you're like, oh, we gotta rescue them right away, right? But like Miranda and the elusive man say not to rescue them right away, that we should uh, finish preparing and the main way to prepare is doing loyalty missions. But if you do the loyalty missions, time progresses and your crew is very much at risk if you do not immediately save them. Uh, and fewer people will be there to be found when you arrive. Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Not really a direct reference to what's going on, surprisingly. Commander. Sorry about the crew, and I... You know what? I'm not sorry. What the hell were you doing leaving us out here where collectors can work us over? Because you know what? I should... I should just go. Next port, just get the hell out of here. You don't mean that, Jeff. I... No, but it... It felt good. I'm sorry, Commander. Okay, I'm ready. I'm good. I'm ready to save the day. Have you been able to get back to your duties? Yeah, we're back up to speed. Edie pretty much has everything covered. 
My predictive capabilities will mesh well with Jeff's reactionary piloting. She means that she'll try to keep up when I spaz. I notice you're calling Edie her and she now. Huh. No, I hadn't really noticed that. Edie, should I have noticed that? No, Jeff. It is not worth noting. Well, there you go, Shepard. Looks like we haven't noticed anything. I think you're taking the human-machine interface a little far. I'm just having a little fun with you, Commander. No need to get all unnatural on me. What Jeff and I are exhibiting is more a platonic symbiosis than hormonally induced courtship behavior. Okay, yeah, that was a little creepy. Edie's replaced the whole crew. You're not concerned she can replace you too? Well, she's amazing, but there's something off about how she handles the Normandy. We ran simulations, and it's better when we both have the helm. Calculating an optimum course of action is simple. If two AI weapons are pitted against each other, the one with superior hardware will always win. Human misjudgments defy predictive models. License to screw up, Commander. You heard it straight from the ship. Well, you let me know if you need anything, Joker. Will do, Commander. But Edie's got it covered. That's amusing. Yeah, he, she talks. She, they say that they beat, they beat simulations when he's driving because humans don't always do what makes sense. Yeah, sure. Although as humans, and because this is a fictional written universe, we're really good at writing excuses for why humans are secretly great. Kind of like how we always write a reason for like death is great and mortality is great because it makes us care more about the time we have, and that means that death is good or something like. We, we're, we're good at justifying everything about our lives as being an improvement somehow. That's probably how fiction... It's probably because fiction is designed to help us process things. Shepard, how can I help? Have you got a minute to talk? Not at the moment. Think I've unlocked collector interest in humans. Wait, no. Only one heart. Krogan have two. Scratch that. Anything else? I'll let you work. We'll be here if you need me. Alonzi, I know this can be viewed as time wasting, of course, but I just want to. I feel like it's important to visit the areas and just see that everyone's gone. Period. Because it adds weight to the fact that everyone was stolen. Even the women's restroom. Oh no. Although I've never seen anyone use the restrooms. That'd be a little weird, I suppose. I thought we could chat a bit. I would like that. You have been a good friend to me. That means a lot to me. If we both still live when this is done, you may call upon me for aid at any time. I will come for you, Shepard. That's neat. Just a straight up promise of like, nope, I'm loyal to you, like really loyal to you now. Surprise. Not sure if I'd expect that from her at first. But defying expectations is what makes a lot of the characters interesting. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk? Later. I'd like to consider what we've already discussed. I should go. I shall return to my meditations. I like some of the dialogue better than the other ones for this state. So some of them have a default state, you know, calibrations they go to. But some of them like, all right, everything's great, and I'm ready for the mission, like that you get from Jacob and Grunt, and that kind of, that's just a little bit more satisfying as a final talk. So quiet around here. I miss the crew. I'm really glad you got Tally out of trouble with the migrant fleet. It's hard to see her upset. I usually travel hidden away in cargo bays. It's nice to be able to look out a window for a change. I'm not really sure what to do with myself. Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Go figure. You have to go to you have to go to Kasumi to get an actual acknowledgement of what happened with the crew being gone from uh, people's dialogue. But that's because Kasumi co uh, comments on everything. Unfor uh it's it's neat detail, but for the most part, her dialogue boils down to, "I'm I, I'm glad you did that thing. It was sad when it wasn't done." Is more or less her response to every single the dialogue she gets for every single person's loyalty mission. Commander, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? There's a lot to do, Shepard. Maybe another time. I'll let you work. Of course, Commander. This is kind of cool, too, because it just... It seals... It really drives home how many characters we have in the party. Also, this is empty. 
you can't you can't you can't avoid your crew members in this game like walking around this crew you just get constant chatter from them just going around so you notice when they're completely absent Shepard need me for something have you got a minute definitely part of me still thinks we're crazy for even considering blowing off steam but I want to try it with you I want a few moments that are just for us, before we throw ourselves into hell for the good of the galaxy. I want that too, Garrus. Glad to hear it. I'll do some, uh, research and figure out how to, you know... Okay, that sounded bad. <laughs> I like how the conversation doesn't even end. He just turns around and ends it. He just stops having the conversation. <laughs> more or less, instead of actually saying goodbye or closing the conversation in any way. And Shepard herself also refrains from the I gotta go and the conversation dialogue. Shepard Commander. I'd like to find out more about you. Topic. When we took you aboard, I noticed you have a piece of N7 armor welded to you. Where'd you get it? It was yours. When you disappeared, we were sent to find you. We began where you first encountered the heretics. Eden Prime. After the old machine's attack, it was heavily defended. We were discovered. This is the impact of a rifle shot. How many other Geth were sent out to find me? We are the only mobile platform beyond the veil. Organics fear us. We wish to understand, not in sight. One platform was judged sufficient. You've been looking for me for two years? We visited Therum, Theros, Novaria, Vermeer, Ilos. A dozen unsettled worlds. The trail ended at Normandy's wreckage. You were not there. Organic transmissions claimed your death. We recovered this debris from your heart suit. The Geth are listening in on our transmissions? Organic life reacts to stimuli in unpredictable ways. We wish to learn. It sounds like you're running experiments on us. You are sapient life, but not like us. If we can model organic behavior, we can comprehend the Quarian creators. We do not understand their judgments in the Morning War. What's the Morning War? The conflict between the Geth and the Quarian creators. The war fought at the dawn of our intelligence. It concluded with the departure of the Creator Migrant Fleet. What do you mean by stimuli? We placed a fabricated story on the extranet that a certain arrangement of stars viewed from the Batarian homeworld formed the face of a Salarian goddess. Without waiting for verification, some declared a proof of the goddess's existence. Those who noted the lack of proof were attacked. The arguments taught us much. The experiment ended when a Salarian cult tried to purchase colonization rights to the stars and found they did not exist. Why were you trying to contact me? You opposed the heretics, those that took the old machines as gods. All kinds of organics fought Sovereign and his Geth allies. Why am I so interesting? You were the most successful. You killed their god. You succeeded where others did not. Your code is superior. That doesn't explain why you used my armor to fix yourself. There was a hole. But why didn't you fix it sooner, or with something else? No data available. That's interesting, right? So, he took damage, didn't know what- uh, He took some damage, had to repair it, repaired it with a piece of our armor, and when asked, he doesn't have an answer for why he did it. Either he's hiding something for, from us, but he seems to indicate that he doesn't hide things from people. Uh, or he doesn't understand himself why he did it. Because maybe there's some sort of hint of actual emotion going on, going around in there and they don't know how to process or even acknowledge that kind of, that kind of decision making. Shepard Commander. I'd like to find out more about you. We are building a consensus. Please try again later. I have to get back to work. Acknowledged. Yeah, it's worth a shot. An unfortunate part of how they handled the situation is that they tied a party member to the Reaper IFF acquisition. But the end of the game has to happen like two missions after the Reaper IFF. 
unless you want to specifically endanger your crew. And while it is a cute detail to be all like, ooh, you thought you could just do whatever you want and be completionist about it, but the moment you're completionist about it, you actually have suffer consequences for delaying your behavior and stuff like that. Like, that's, that's a cool detail, but being a video game, the audience will immediately figure out, more or less, what the triggers are behind the thing. And so that, that surprise works once, and then the game is forever a game where everyone just knows, oh yeah, you do the Reaper IFF, then you do two missions, and then the story progresses. So that just leads to people not getting Legion for as long as possible, which is a bummer, because Legion's a really interesting character. He is, like, what do I call it? Like, he's a lore growth character in, a, in one of the most major ways. Like, the entire point of Mass Effect 1's crew was to give you a series of different characters that all fit different niches of, like, here's an Asari, here's a Krogan, here's a Turian, here's a C-Sec operative, here's an outsider arche archaeologist character, here's a bunch of other different characters, like, here's a... here's a soldier, here's a biotic, here's a Corian. Like, they were all supposed to expand the universe around you. There are diminishing returns in the second game there. Uh, they try to mess around with some people, like, like Jack is a Cerberus experiment biotic person, so that's different and crazy and messed up. Uh, Kasumi and Saeed have, like, no impact on the lore, basically, aside from Saeed, Zaid being one of the, uh, leaders of one of the, yeah, an ex-leader of one of the gangs that this game focuses on, so that's a little bit of something. Uh, Grunt is a fun detail about a Kro Krogan scientist, but you can see what I'm talking about, right? Like, almost all these people are from cultures we've encountered before, and crew members that are duplicates of species we've had before, or in some cases, Tally and Garrus are literally the same character we had before, and they expand on it by going deeper into their backstory, or in Tally's case, going getting up a close and personal with Corin culture, which is cool, but it's, uh, it's expanding on stuff we already know a bit. But Legion is the crazy wildcard character that changes everything, and being able to take Legion with you and have him interact with various characters throughout the entire story is interesting. The idea of having everyone throughout the game react to the fact that you have a Geth in your party is interesting, but you have to actively get a worse outcome in the story by doing so, by prioritizing... Because in order to do that, you have to put off every single side quest you can possibly put off for as long as possible, uh, rush the story all the way up to Legion, which is like the last thing before the end of the game, then go back to all the side content you haven't done so far, including character recruitments, and then take Legion with you. And so you basically, you it basically gives you a worse outcome for your story as a result, and that's a bummer. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a bummer. Because uh, yeah, who would who wouldn't want to recruit? Obviously, it's a bad idea to, from a story perspective to do it, but who wouldn't want to recruit uh, Tally and have Legion on the mission where you recruit Tally and you're like, oh. I, I, there's, there's a geth in my party uh, about that <laughs> while you're trying to save her from her death mission against geth like that's there's fun scenarios to be had but they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit by making it as hard as possible to have those scenarios without actively making a mess for yourself back for another lesson joker handled himself well should have come back here and got a real weapon still did real well for a kid with glass bones Pretty sure I'd be laid up in bed if I were him. One time we were trying to clear out this gun nest outside a base on Vatar. Nothing we did even made a dent in that thing. Someone had the bright idea to kidnap a local girl, strap grenades on her, and make her go seduce the guy in the bunker. Terrible thing, I tell you. Well, she went up there, knocked on the door, and nothing. Grenades never went off. But the guy stopped shooting, and we snuck by. Never found out what happened. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. Yeah, weird quirk, huh? The only characters in the crew that acknowledge the invasion that happened is uh, Kasumi and Zaid. I imagine it's because they retroactively were like, oh, we should... When we're adding DLC characters, they're like, we should really acknowledge the part where the entire crew gets taken. <laughs> Shepard. Just checking in. How are you doing? Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. That's all for now. Shepard. He is fully satisfied. 
and doesn't care about anything. What's Grunt's motivation for going on the suicide mission? It exists. <laughs> Sets him apart from everyone else in the crew, more or less, who are most mostly here for some. They've either been. It's either some sort of deal has led them here, or they're personally loyal to Shepard or something. Grunt's just like, nah. I'm finally whole. Let's go kill things. Hey. What's happening? Shepard, we talked enough. You're just pissing around. No hard feelings, but I don't want to play. I should go. Whatever. Uh, that's an unfortunate default conversation to have with, with Jack. I feel like it probably actively hurts people's opinions of her because you're like, ah, she's the one that tells me to piss off every time I talk to her. <laughs> kind of a bummer. But I mean, it fits a bit. It's just, it's as a default one, it's like, huh. Shepard, what can I do for you? Have you got time to talk? I really need to clean up this engine. Maybe later? I'll let you work. Talk to you later. Yep. And there's, that's supposed to be Donnie and Gabby. Nope. They're gone. Everyone's gone! That was a cool sequence, by the way, when everyone's being stolen and you're going through... It, it's, it works because it's such a familiar location and you're navigating it in an, in an unusual and different way. That kind of adds to the whole experience. It's a cool thing. But yeah, everyone was stolen. And none of the none of the uh, non-DLC crew members even acknowledge it outside of that first cutscene that two of them were in. Weird detail, I'd say. Like, there are a lot of RPGs where the entire home base gets obliterated halfway through when you go somewhere else. And usually the crew, your, your party members usually acknowledge the, the obliteration happening. So it's it's slightly weird that this game doesn't ha acknowledge a similar occurrence. Although Joker does, and he should. Although he's kind of being cheeky about it with his uh, little Edie romance thing going on. 